nada, casi nada. Y uh, bueno, me ha gustado especialmente el chocolate, me ha parecido estupendo. ¿Qué chocolate? Había chocolate, lo siento. Estaba muy bien. Bueno, eh, sí. Eh, ahora vamos a hablar de algo que yo personalmente sé que me hace muchísima falta, o sea, de cómo organizarnos. Después de lo que nos ha contado Wendy antes, uh, me hace aún más falta y creo que, que la charla que vamos a escuchar a, ahora es perfecta después de... Y, y ya lo veráis, ya veráis por qué. Porque yo tengo el privilegio de ya haber conocido a Paula y a sus compañeras y socias, una que tengo aquí delante, el año pasado en WordCamp Verona, donde escuché la charla de Alessandra, que está aquí, que es socia de, de Paula, que era también sobre organización y es que flipé, o sea, las cosas, el tiempo que todos perdimos. Yo no sé si os pasa a vosotros también, a mí, por cierto, yo llego a, especialmente los que trabajamos solos, sin tener un equipo, sin tener un jefe ni nada, el tiempo que me pierdo yo con, y ni siquiera a veces redes sociales, o sea, puede ser de todo, mis gatos, lo que sea. Entonces, todas las... las um, los consejos, bueno, los consejos, sistemas. Wendy antes nos ha dado sistemas. Lo que Wendy nos ha contado de cómo sacar provecho de clientes con poco presupuesto ha sido sistemas. Paola y sus compañeras, pero hoy Paola, van a hacer lo mismo. Y Paola merece muchísimo la pena escucharle porque ella es súper organizada, porque es nómada digital. O sea, ella vive lleva su maleta y vive sacando las cosas de la maleta. Entonces, si tienes que ser organizado. Yo no sé si vosotros viajáis. Yo cuando viaje, viajo desastres, que viajo bastante a menudo. He mejorado un poco, pero todavía no lo tengo bien claro. Entonces, no veo la hora de que, de que Paula nos cuente cómo, no, cuál es el ingrediente secreto de una organización de tu tiempo bueno, perfecta no, nadie, no queremos ser perfectos, pero lo mejor posible para sacarle más provecho al tiempo libre, porque creo que es, es eso, ¿no? Para ser más felices y tener más tiempo y viajar bien sin dejarse las cosas, los cables del iPhone en todos los hoteles y tal. Y eh, os he dado la presentación en español porque Paula entiende muy bien español, pero la charla, para que, para que quede claro, es, va a ser en inglés. Y ahora... Muchas gracias a Paula gracias. para haber venido, por haber venido aquí. Uh, I think I have this. Sí. Okay, that's yeah. good. Thank you, Picha, for this presentation. All the expectations now are woo, and I hope <laughs> I will cope with that. So thank you for being here. Uh, uh, today we talk about time, so let's get it started. But first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Paula, the hidden one. Uh, I'm Italian and I'm a professional organizer. Have you ever heard of this job? Someone did, someone, no, not at all. I'm a consultant and I help my clients to be organized during their days, to set their priorities, to uh, get their things done, so their activities, and to find uh, an important work-life balance, which is something that interests uh, the majority of, of, of us. So I am co-founder of Organizzatessen. We are a group of four uh, professional organizers. And uh, we work with companies, with freelancers, we give classes, and we make one-to-one -one sessions. So uh, today we will talk about uh, time in general. So I'm sure you've heard a lot about time management. You, you've used these expressions a lot of times, but I'm sorry to inform you that we cannot manage time. So. You will be disappointed, but the best thing that we can do is manage ourselves in our day. Why is there a need of a professional organizer or a consultant like me, for example? Because life got really, really complicated in the last 10 or 20 years. There are so many things that we have to do, so many things that we want to do, and so little time and energy to, uh, to accomplish them. So our uh, schedule uh, already start, we, we start our schedule already in a hurry in the morning, and most of the times we arrive at the end of the day that we are exhausted and we still have a lot of things to do 
uh, that we have to um, postpone to the next days. So we have to uh, fit all the pieces together. And this is why it is, is important, like Wendy said before, to focus on the important things in your day, meaning in your work, but also in your personal life. So this is very important to have a good time management. So we talk about time, but time is limited. We don't have uh, that much time we would like to have. We have just 24 hours in a day, and this is for everyone. Uh, I know we would like to have an ocean of minutes all for ourselves, but we have just 24 hours, and let's say we have a pool uh, of minutes. Uh, and in a pool, you cannot add more water than it fits. So, uh, Although we would love it, uh, uh, but we cannot save minutes that we, we didn't use properly, and uh, we cannot get, get the ones that we used back. So we have to cope what we, what, what, with what we have. Sorry, but my English sometimes is like... Pfft. Okay, so uh, we have to party with a pool. <coughs> I could teach you a lot of ways to be productive, and Rocio was looking for some more producti productivity tools, but I'm sorry, I wouldn't give you any today. <laughs> no, uh, we will just focus on this, that pro productivity is, of course, a solution in our day. We can um, learn techniques and strategies, and we can add tools in our day to get more things done. But the point is uh, we cannot uh, get 36 hour days. Although we are very uh, efficient with many tools, but still, we cannot stretch our time. So we have to deal with this, and we have to be really aware of this. So what? What am I doing here? I'm not talking about time management, I'm not giving tools. What am I doing here? Now I, want, I would like to focus on something very important to me that I think could be very important to you as well. How long does a minute last? You would say 60 seconds. <laughs> OK. Do we agree on that? Of course. OK. Fine. Uh, this is what we know. But in fact, how long is a minute aware of how long does a minute uh, last in, when we are aware of what we are doing compared to a minute in which we are not aware of what happens. For example, when we are scrolling, scrolling our feeds, like Wendy told us, or if we are focusing on something that matters to us. So I would like to make an experiment with you. I will set a time watch on one minute and we will spend this minute just being aware of the time passing by. So you just stay there, and we will see what happens. All right? OK, let me take out my phone. Are you ready? Yes. OK, let's start. Okay, that felt awkward, right? You weren't at ease, probably. We started laughing. No, not at all. <laughs> Wendy, no, no. No, uh, you weren't at ease, and probably you had the impulse to take out your phone, probably, to scroll down the feed, or maybe someone did it. I don't know. But this is what happens all the time. We are not aware of the time passing by. So if you knew a minute would last so long, 
How many things would you do in a minute? So today I would like to introduce a new point of view. Instead of struggling to get hundreds of tasks done the whole day and running and switching from one task very um, rapidly, so uh, why couldn't you just focus on a task? Why couldn't you just dive deep in your time and feel it and live it? Would that be so difficult? Maybe yes, because we are not used to that. But still, this is, this is the thing that we should start to learn, because in fact, switching very fast from one task to the other rarely gives us the feeling that we are doing well, that we are doing something with, with real quality. So this is something that we have to learn. So the keyword of today is awareness. Awareness is the real way to get more time in your day. Could you imagine to dive deep in the pool instead of being just on the surface and moving from one task to the other? So how would that feel if you just deep, uh, dive deep uh, in your time, in the tasks you're doing? At the beginning, you would see everything blurred probably and dark. You wouldn't recognize shapes. But then, all of a sudden, you would get accustomed to it and you would start seeing all the details that earlier weren't clear. So you would see, see all, all the things that are important to you and that are the real treasure in your day. What has organization to do with this? Organization is one of the ways, I know, <laughs> uh, to raise awareness in your day. Because all the time we are very, uh, we have a crowded mind. We have so many things in mind, we have so many things to, to remember, things to do, uh, worries or dreams as well, and they all fill our head. So organization is a way to clear your mind, to free it, to free the energy, to focus on the things that matter to you, to the things that are important in your work or in your life. So this is something that we have to learn because we are not used to be aware like we saw in the, in the experiment earlier. And I know what you're thinking. There are so many things in your day that are a burden to you, that bother you, that feel like a pain in the neck. Something that you don't like, probably some tasks or some uh, activities like, I don't know, accounting maybe, or writing that email to the client who's not paying you. Have, have you do you have any other example? Yes, he thought about the client who <laughs> was not paying, okay. Do you have any other example of something that bothers you but still is on your to-do list? I guess you have. So could you imagine... No? Yes? Yeah, I have tons. Tons, okay. Could you imagine how would it be to get through these things faster, to focus on them and to accomplish them can you feel how satisfied you would be once they are gone, once you cancel them from your to-do list? It could be very, very important to you. It would free a lot of time and of energy because all the time that you think about this, uh, uh, this task you're not doing, you're still wasting time and energy. So if you start doing so, uh, you will start to develop your strength and to be satisfied of what you're doing because this is very important to us. If you, fix, if you focus on the things that bother you and you uh, just complete them, you will feel like a power, superpowers. You will be feel very satisfied. So this is something that we should learn, we all should learn. But the problem is someone told us that multitasking is a great skill that we will be faster if we switch from one task to the other and we do at the same time two, two or more things at the same time. Unfortunately, multitasking is a big lie because you are forcing your brain to, be, to do a lot more effort to switch from one task to the other instead of focusing uh, on one task per time. So we are not computers. Uh, we have to admit it to ourselves, first of all, and start doing one thing at a time. I know this sounds very, very difficult, but if you still don't believe me, let's play. 
If you have a sheet of paper and a pen, just take them out and we will do some exercise together. Okay, are you ready? Perfect. Now you will have to write uh, the English alphabet in a row, in capital letters, just like this. No. no. some doubts about the English alphabet, probably. OK, that was an easy task. Now, on the next row, you have to write uh, the number, uh, the sequence uh, of numbers from 1 to 26. Okay, easy, right? Okay. Now, on the next row, you will have to alternate letters and numbers, just like this. So, A, 1, B, 2, C, 3, until Z, and 26. Okay, how is it going? Good? Okay. Okay, it's tiring actually. <laughs> Done, okay, nice. Okay, this is an experiment of what happens when you multitask. So switching from one task to the other, meaning from the letter to the number, um, is a big, big effort from your, to your uh, brain because it has to concentrate on which was the last thing you did, which is the next step you are going to do for every sequence. So every time you switch from one to the other, your brain is making a big, big effort, and this can bring to burnout. And it, the quality of the job you're doing, of course, is, uh, is poor. And this was a stupid example, let's say, but can you believe it, what happens when you are working and at the same time you're just uh, chatting on WhatsApp? Or wh when you're on the phone speaking to a client and at the same time you're writing an email? So which is the result? That you're not listening to the phone and that you're writing the email like an eight-year-old kid, probably, and that you will ask the person to repeat what he or she was saying, and then if you read the email again, you have to rewrite it. So multitasking is not helping you to be faster. It, it makes you make more mistakes, and then it, it will ask you more time to fix these mistakes and you will feel more exhausted in your day because, because of all of this switching. So it's important to learn to focus on one thing at a time. This is my suggestion, do one thing at a time. If you are on the phone, be on the phone. If you're writing the email, be uh, present on your email because the quality of your work will increase. And the satisfaction that's come, that comes through this will increase as well, and we were talking about satisfaction earlier. So it's very important to feel 
that we are doing well in our day. And doing one thing at a time helps us to do this. And can you believe how it feels by doing the, the things that you don't like? It's just the same, being big satisfaction. And I know that in reality, it could be very, very difficult to do one thing at a time because we are not used to this. This is why I suggest to use a timer. A timer can save you. It means that it can help you to focus on the, on the activities you're doing. And this means you can set the timer on 10 or 15 or 30 minutes, depending on how long you think your task will, uh, will last, and then focus on that activity and only that one. And by focusing, I mean turning off your, the programs that could distract you and switching your phone to flight mode and telling the people around you that you are very busy for that 10 or 15 minutes. And then dive deep in this task. It will feel very, very different. And I swear that you will do all the things also in less time than you thought and even before the timer rings. So we have been talking about time management. What is time management? It's spending our time well and wisely and not wasting it. It's about uh, um, getting our things done and get them done well, the ones we like as well as the ones we don't like. It means uh, focusing on every activity and putting your heart, your mind and soul in everything you do. And this means raising your awareness, focusing, means paying attention to, to what you're doing, to your job, to your personal life, to the persons you are with. And this increases your satisfaction, of course. And so it's, it's only by doing all of this that you will start realizing that you have a treasure in your day, which is your time, and you will realize as well that you have even more time than you thought. So this is my uh, takeaway for you. Please do one thing at a time and try to focus and be aware of what you're doing. Your time will, be, will explode and expand. So thank you so much. Bueno, le pasamos. Hola. Hello, Paula. Thank you. Uh, I use the Pomodoro ¿Sí? for my work. And I want to know what do you think about that, if you think that is useful. For me, it's, it's useful because I work, I have a Pomodoro of 15 minutes. Uh -huh. And I don't know, I only want to know what do you think about that? Uh, Pomodoro, for who doesn't know it, it's a technique that says to set a timer on 25 minutes and then have breaks and to focus on that 25 minutes. I think it's a good solution if it works for you, of course, uh, because techniques must fit to everyone's work or day. Uh, and uh, if you feel like it's helping, I'm sure it's a, it's a good solution. Some people say 20, 25 minutes, it's too short time to focus and, and then taking a break uh, uh, is not helping them to get things done. Uh, but still, the, my suggestion is the same one. Use the timer to focus, to dive deep in the things you're doing because this helps you to get them done faster. So if it works for you, yes, absolutely. Hola, Paula. Hola. Oye? Sí. Thank you for the presentation. Thanks. I want to. You said a couple of times uh, getting things done. Uh -huh. uh, what do you think about the GTD mm -hmm. method? Okay, I'm not really because a... what I heard is uh, deep work and GTD. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not really a big, big fan of the whole GTD thing, but I think there are some. Sorry, what what is GTD? Is a uh, getting things done method. Uh, by David Allen, who's really uh, like the productivity boss, or whatever, the Amer he's American. And it's a method, it's a very specific one. So, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a little bit freak of that method. Of course. But that, it has a big, a big problem for me, uh, because you need to feed it. You need to, to feed this method. And yes. You, you waste a lot of time just keeping all the things 
organize it. Uh, it's what I think. I was asking you. Yes, just like for the Pomodoro technique. Every technique is good if you feel it, if you are comfor comfortable do, uh, using it. Because otherwise, it feels like it's another job. If you, that's, it's something that uh, is uh, it's too much. And if you have this feeling, then maybe GTD is not the system for you. But you can take some uh, of, uh, of its suggestions, actually. I like the brain dump part, for example. So brain dump is like taking out all the things that you have in mind and writing them. This is very helpful, of course. But the rest of it's... Yeah, yeah, I, I know it can, it can be... Yes, exactly. So uh, maybe you can take some parts of it, the ones that, use, that are useful for you, sure. Uh, and this is what we do actually in our, in our job, yeah, to, split it, to yeah. split it and to use what is, is OK for you. Uh, and this is what we do, actually. We just try to um, make the best solution for the person, actually, and not just taking a method and applying it completely. Because if you don't feel it, it doesn't work. Thank you. Hello, I was wondering if you have, because the point of the talk was to get very focused, um, very aware and mindful of what you are doing in the moment you are doing it. And I was wondering if you have ever worked with people who were f like physically unable to focus, like people with ADHD, mm -hmm. ADHD and how did you, and if you uh, like recommended them some exercises or what, how did you deal with them if it has happened? Okay, no, I never, I never work with uh, HDHD uh, persons, but uh, I think mm, some of the techniques might might work uh, for them as well. For example, um, I am thinking of uh, children, for example, that cannot uh, uh, focus on on their tasks and maybe help them to be focused one or two minutes and then three until five, etc. This helps them to get used to some methods. But specifically with the, these you know, problems, I don't, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I have a question, yeah. if I may. So I, um, I, I, know, I know exactly how long a minute is. It's between 14 and 16 breaths, depending on how deep I breathe, because I do meditation, I do okay. yoga, I hold poses for very long, and so on. But still, I have a huge, huge problem focusing when I'm working because I am addicted to my phone, to Slack, to Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram. It's terrible. I have recently, I mean, I'm, I'm a very grown woman. I mean, I'm nearly, you know, but I still, I feel like a child with, with, with a, an attention deficit problem and it's induced by phones. And I, I, it's become recently like a real problem for me if i have to focus also because i work for myself i don't have a boss i don't have a team i am not accountable to anyone but myself and it's a real issue these days that i get to the end of the day i'm like what have i well done? done maybe i have got a few things finished but really it's become a problem. So this talk is like so really important for me. So I guess that may, I was thinking maybe the Pomodoro technique is something that I should be doing, but because maybe yes, yeah, starts with small chunks and then, as you were saying, like with a child, with it. But really, I am cursing my phone because I wasn't addicted, and I have to admit, I am addicted to my phone. It's it's a new, and then if I turn the phone off. Well, I still have Facebook and Twitter and Slack on, mm. on my computer. And the thing is that I think that I should just switch off the internet, just turn it off. But I can't do that because a lot of the tasks that I need to accomplish actually need the internet. So it's, it's, um, it's a problem. So I think that what you do is really, it's incredibly relevant these days. I guess it's not a question as in, help. <laughs> <laughs> But, so I would say Pomodoro technique maybe? Yes, is. but um, there are also some um, tools, programs on the computer, for example, I can imagine of self-control. You just uh, 
set the um, in the pages that you don't want to to see while you're working. So Facebook out of it, and then, uh, and, then and you make the list, it. and, and then, then I disable it. I uh, know, but, <laughs> but help yourself. <laughs> I know yeah. it's hard. It's hard because we are all addicted, addicted actually. So I have an it's app like on my phone and on my computer. And well, I have an app like that because I know the problem, um, and it's called Freedom. And yes. it is once it's in working, you can't turn it off. Exactly. You can't turn it off. Um, and it's horrible. It is actually horrible. <laughs> Because I have my Freedom app on for social media between 10 at night and 10 in the morning because I want to get, because my loss of time was before I went to bed, I was endlessly sc scrolling through the Instagram and Facebook and whatever. And when I got up, it was the first thing I did. So I, I, eliminated, I eliminated those and it is like so refreshing. So it's amazing, but I cursed the app millions of times already so it is but it's working because you can't turn it off mm -hmm. and I think also I hope freedom what I was thinking as well is then my excuse is that some of the people I work with communicate with me via messenger it's just because we're used to it we're friends on Facebook and they write to me in messenger so I guess that the story is that you just have to tell everybody it's like if you want to speak to me you need to email me and, and then we make, well, it's, so I don't you open don't messenger. Have to answer immediately. Mm. You don't yeah. have to. I know, but I feel, I know, but I get anxious because I think maybe someone's written to me and, yeah. and I'm going to die. I'm going to die because I can't see it. You're right. I'm sorry, no, you don't need it. No, well, you need it. So okay, after my rant, does, uh, is there, are there any more questions? Please. No, I'm a disaster. How do you do it with not work tasks? How do you do it with not work related tasks? Because I am pretty good at doing focused work. Yes. When it's work, but then I go cooking and cleaning and ironing and walking the dog and I right like that. Okay. So how do you do how do you do you also use the, the timer technique? You can use it if you're do the, the cleaning and you don't like cleaning, you just set the timer, 15 minutes, very concentrated, and then you, you take just a quit. nap, you <laughs> give it a break, and then you do something else. Okay. Cool. Hello. Hello, hello. There. Hello. Sorry. Um, so, uh, thank you for the presentation, very interesting. Um, my question is, when we are a lot here entrepreneurs, and when you're an entrepreneur, sometimes you have to be multitasking. Uh, because, in my case at least, uh, I receive calls, and then that call brings to one thing that I have to answer and do right away, or, and I was doing something else, and then something else happened. And it's very difficult to just say no. Or for example, I, I cannot put my phone, I can't not put my phone into airplane mode. It's impossible because in my case, if I miss a call, that means one sale that it's gone. So in, in this case, I, well, I cannot say I have developed multitasking because that's not true. But I have learned more or less to do several tasks kind of at the same time. I won't say I'm very successful at it, but it has to be done like this, at least for the moment, because I am alone doing my own stuff. Maybe when I have something else or somebody else working with me, that could be different. But for, this, for the moment, sometimes you have, at least in my case, I have to do it like this. And I was talking to my colleague here, my friend, uh, and more or less, we are, have the same issue. So, but I guess I'm not. We are not the only one, probably, doing that. Mm -hmm. So, how do you deal with these cases? How? Do, wh what is your recommendation to that? Well, I start off 
understanding if you are working in a hospital or an emergency room. So this is one. This is not the case, of course. So we are like, we can take a breath. Okay. So it's it's okay to. We have a lot of things done. But it's not uh, that you have to save lives and you have to do right uh, everything at the same time. So this means probably we can just focus on one thing. Maybe you, have, you are on the phone, just be on the phone and then you take a note on what you have to do next. But just, it's, it's a sequence of what you have to do. It's not, uh, you're not doing a good job actually if you're not focused on what you're doing because you are thinking of too many things altogether. So this is, this is the point. It's just being aware that you have to do it in sequence. It's not possible to do a good job and to be focused and to be satisfied of what you're doing if you just run from one thing to the other. It's just like being on the surface all the time. And you're not really getting what you're doing. But I, I understand there are so many people that tell, tell us that no, I cannot switch my emails off, that we have to uh, be on the phone all the time, and that I, I communicate with my clients like this. It's all true, we all do it all the time, but we're not saving lives, for, oh, in my case, I'm not saving lives in that moment. So I have to uh, make choices and stay focused on the one, the one thing that I'm doing at that moment, and then I go on in setting priorities as well, and then making a, a list, actually, of what you have to do in sequence. Because, OK, you are able now to multitask or to switch very fast from one task to the other, but you feel exhausted. Probably. You're probably not happy either. So I think that, they're not, that we're not saving lives. I mean, I'm saying this to myself as well, but we're not saving lives. I think that's the most important thing. Now, it's, um, yeah, in five minutes, it is the, the, there's the, the round table in, uh, in track one. And I cannot thank Paola enough thank for the wonderful, wonderful talk that she's given us. Thank you. Thank you.